Good morning. Happy January 17th. We are day nine of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as people are coming on this morning, we'll give a moment for those who are joining us. Uh, Heather White, that's the first name to pop up on my screen. Good morning, Ms. Heather. Glad to see you with us this morning. Good morning, Shane. Um, so grateful, so many of you. Ms. Shirley, good to see you that are participating. Madeline, good morning. Uh, Amy, good morning. Glad to have you with us again. Um, Miss Alana, proud of you. Man, that's some of our young folks getting up. Heather Diadio, uh, getting up and being a part of this this morning. Miss Andrika, glad to have you with us. Hello, Wise family. Glad to have you guys. Caleb Carney. Um, as pe more people are coming on, Miss Valerie, good to see you. Just want to remind those who may be watching with us for the first time, we have a journal that we are working through. Uh, good morning, Miss Becca. Uh, Heaven, glad to have you with us. Heaven has signed up for baptism. I'm excited about that. Uh, Miss Jean, uh, we're, we are so excited to be doing this with you. And if you need a journal to do it uh, with us, get on uh, our website, cotlakes.com, under resources, 21 days of prayer and fasting, and the journal is there for you. Good morning, Miss Nora. David Fail, good to see you, my friend. Lynn Lynch, glad to have you guys with us. David Fail, one of our administrators in, in our, our schools, grateful for him. Miss Andrea, uh, you probably been up all night with the baby. Um, but hopefully not, but anyway, but grab your journal and, and join in with us. Also, we, uh, have a link for you. I added a link, been trying to add a link every day with some kind of worship, uh, song for you, uh, to listen to that maybe ties to the message. So there's a link on there. Uh, some people have had a hard time finding it. So if you find it and you want to share it in the comments to make it easier for other folks, then that would be great. Good morning, Mr. Ken, Simon. Uh, man, look at everybody rolling in. Mel, good to see you this morning. Alabama represented, roll tide. Um, but also want to remind you something we're doing this week, and that is prayer partners. So this week and next week for the last part of the 21 days, trying to find a prayer partner from a different generation. So uh, if you're still struggling to do that, I've got a lady, I, I, I think she's a Gen X, sir. I think she's my age. Um, and uh, looking for a partner. So if you need a partner and you're not in that generation, maybe send me a message, let me know. We'll get you hooked up with somebody. Last announcement that we'll get into uh, th this morning, and that is fifth Sunday family worship is coming up. I just mentioned it a moment ago, baptism. Two things that we always do at fifth Sunday family worship, child dedication. We are excited to uh, dedicate the new baby in the Farner family. So they're signed up. We have a child dedication. We already have four baptisms. So if you're interested in being baptized, Get on the website, cotlakes.com, sign up for baptism. All right, grab your journal, and uh, let's read these uh, scriptures. I'll read them uh, out loud, and you can read along. Psalm 18 and 2, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 1611, you make known to me the paths of life. You will find me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. I like that one. Acts 16 and 31, believe in and on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is an amplified version. I really like the way this says this. That is, give yourself up to him. Listen to these words. Take yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself to his keeping. I highlighted that in, in, in mine. And you will be saved. And this applies to both you and your household as well. Boy, that stood out to me today. Take yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself into his keeping. And I was, I was just thinking, man, how quickly I think that I am in control. I think I've, I'm doing everything. But y'all, God's writing a story. Part of us, I think, doing 21 days of prayer and fasting is getting back to a place of surrender. It's, it's getting back to a place that he's the source. He's my fortress, as we just read. He's my deliverer. He's my stronghold. He has everything under control in the process. So I want to give you a real quick, uh, just four quick thoughts this morning and then let you spend some time in prayer and with your journal this morning. Um, how do you entrust yourself to his keeping? I, I just love that that terminology. How do you entrust yourself to God's keeping? Here, here's my first thought. You stand firm on God's promises. You stand firm 
on God's promises. Listen to Hebrews 6 and 13. I loved this verse when I read this. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. Love that. I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. I love that. Can I remind you this morning that your God is so big that when he gets on the stand and raises his right hand, he says, so help me me. <laughs> there is no one higher. There is no one greater. So help me me. Right? He, he has it all. So we've got to stand firmly on God's promises. We've got to come back to his word and remember who he is and, and what he's promised to us. And for some of you, you've been holding us on to something so long that maybe doubt is breaking in. Maybe, maybe you're at that place where you're like, you know, I don't, and I just want to just say hold firm today to what God has said because he works all things for good for those who love him, is what the scripture tells us. And, and so you got to stand firm, stand firm today um, and, and renew your mind to what it is that God has promised you and what he says in his word. Here's, here's the second way that we make sure that we entrust ourselves to his keeping. Number two, you let go of the need to be in control. Now, that one for me is, is, is not an easy one. I don't know about you. I don't know how many other control freaks are out there, uh, but the reality being is, Every once in a while, life reminds us we're not as in control as we think we are, right? When that person plows into the side of your car on a Tuesday afternoon, all of a sudden you realize, I'm not in control of everything, like, like life happens. Well, when you get that medical report, uh, you all of a sudden realize, I'm not as in control of this life as I think I am. So Proverbs 16 and 9 reminds us, the heart of a man plans his way but the Lord establishes his steps. And I encourage you this morning in your prayer time after this, take a few moments and say, God, where am I trying to be in control? And how do I need to release this to you? How do I need to trust you in the process? How do I entrust myself to your keeping while I relinquish control? I do everything I can, but up until that point, I trust you in it. How else do we entrust ourselves to God's keeping? Well, you choose faith instead of fear. You choose faith instead of fear. Now, that's a big saying. We got t-shirts these days and signs, and a lot of it had to do with the pandemic. But how do you really do that practically? How do you practically choose faith over fear? Well, it, it made me think about the story. It's in uh, Matthew 8 or Mark 4. Uh, you can find it, but Jesus gets into a boat and falls asleep. Now, one of the things we're trying to do as followers is to be more like Jesus. So let's stop there and say one thing that is a good idea when it warms up is I think you should take more naps on boats. That's how you can be just like Jesus, right? Amen. Uh, that's a good one. But Jesus gets on a boat and he falls asleep in the middle of the boat and a storm comes. Remember the story, right? And the, and the, um, the disciples are freaking out, okay? They're choosing fear over faith. And so they, they wake Jesus up the whole kind of thing. He says, stop, and boom, the storm stops. And they ask this question, what kind of man is this? I think on a daily basis, that's a question we should ask ourselves. Jesus, this, 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 this man who came to earth, but who is God, what kind of man is this? Because when we remind ourselves what kind of man he is, uh, it will overcome our fear. When we remind ourselves of what he has done in our lives, when we remind ourselves, man, I'm not where I want to be, but I sure am a lot farther than where I used to be. Amen, anybody? And, 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 and so what kind of man is this? What has he already done in my life that I know I can choose faith over fear? Last one, and, uh, and I'll let you spend some time praying and talking to God today. How, how do you entrust yourself to his keeping? Last one is you work while you're waiting. You work while you're waiting. What I mean by that is, so often what I see is people who are waiting on God, haven't got an answer um, in the middle of the crisis. The, the, what they have a tendency to do is go into to still mode. I just go into paralysis. I'm just, I'm just waiting on God. Well, hold on. Work while you wait. 
What is it that God has put in, in your responsibility today? You got kids that, that need you to focus on them. You got a marriage that you need, you got a job that you need to do well. Yes, there's some chaos. Yes, there's some answer that I don't have yet, but don't let the fear cause you to get to a place of stillness. Work while you wait. Because here's what I believe. I believe God's watching and, and sees our character that when we're in the middle of the struggle and we don't have the answer, but he sees us doing the grind is what I call it, that day-to-day -day monotony. Sometimes it feels like you're you're in the movie Groundhog Day, right? You know, get up, get the kids ready, get to school, go to work, go to bed, you know, the whole and do it all over again the next day. Hey, work while you're waiting. There's something today. Here it is, January 17th. It's a Tuesday. What is significant about this day? Yes, you don't have an answer to that question. Uh, no, your God hasn't answered your, your prayer request for that adult child to come home yet, that prodigal that you've been praying for. But today, there's something for you to do. What is it? I think that's how we entrust ourselves to his keeping. Really, really simple ideas, but very practical. Stand firm on his promises, right? <clears throat> Let go of the need to be in control. Choose faith over fear by asking yourself, what kind of man is Jesus? And what has he done in my life? And then, hey, today, let's get to work. The things that we have assignments, let's get to work in doing what God has called us to do today. I believe you put something that practical in play today, and I think you're going to see you, you come to a place of, you know, I'm entrusting God. I'm going to do what I can do, but I'm trusting him. And you'll see God move. You'll see him move in situations, change things, but probably more than anything, change you. Change your heart, change your mind, um, maybe the direction of your steps today. Let me pray for you this morning, and then you take some time, pray through this, work on your journal a little bit, and um, see what God says to you today. Father, thank you for uh, this reminder. Every one of us have things right now that we don't have an answer for it yet. We're we're wondering about. We're questioning. We should I go this way? Should I take that new job? Should should I should I quit my current job? What about this medical report that I've got? So many things that life comes at us. Help us, God, to entrust ourselves to Your keeping. Today, Tuesday, January seventeenth, we're gonna walk as people who are understanding that You are our source. So keep our eyes focused on you today and give us ears to hear what you want, where you want us to step, where you want us to go. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Man, have a great, great day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.